Hello, bug friends. I have a little bit of time on tour out here in the cloud forest. So I wanted to answer, answer Daniel's question about when in an insect's life development, do they develop their venom? Or I think he specifically just said venom, but I'm going to broaden this out to insects and arthropods and poison and venom, because really the answer is super varies depending on what bug you are and what you're doing with your life. So if you are a spider, you're pretty much born with the venom that you need. The venom is, it is a very loud wren. Uh, the, they basically need to have the venom from the get-go because they're, they're voracious predators and when they're growing, they need a lot of food to continue growing. So yeah, spiders just pretty much pretty much synthesize it really quickly or are born with it. If we're looking at something like millipedes, and again, a lot of this information hasn't been studied very well. And so there's some holes in our knowledge and probably holes in mine as well. So, you know, this is gonna be pretty general. But like millipedes, for example, just synthesize the cyanide. They bind it to a specific oil and they just have the innate ability to create the cyanide, which is pretty cool because there's a moth, this six spot brunette moth, which also uses cyanide as a poison, but it basically receives the cyanide from its diet as a larva. Now the eggs are imbued with cyanide and that is because males will give a nuptial gift consisting of cyanide to the females and she will pass that down onto her eggs and then once the larva starts eating that is when they are getting all of the cyanide that they're going to need for their adult life so after the moth emerges as a moth it can no longer feed to ob obtain the cyanide but instead just has it uh, from the time that it was a larva which is why that nuptial gift is so important because the more the male can eat as a larva, the more cyanide he can give to a female nuptial gift, and that basically suggests how fit he was because he could you know, beat up all the other caterpillars on the block. Things like monarch butterflies, the, it's kind of like the same idea. The caterpillar will eat and obtain the toxic chemical cardiac glycoside from the milkweed plants. And then we'll just imbue that into the exoskeletons. So when the caterpillar emerges as a monarch butterfly, that toxin is imbued in the exoskeleton already. Moving on from here, <laughs> venom. Now, when we think about venom in insects in general, right, what do we think of? We're thinking of like ants, we're thinking of bees, we're thinking of wasps, right? Things that sting us with a pointy end. They have to develop that venom after their larva and after they've come out of their pupa because the venom is being delivered by an ovipositor, which is adult structures, it's genitalia. If it wasn't being used for stingers, the ovipositor in other insects is how they lay their eggs. And so in these ants, bees, and wasps, that structure has been modified to be able to, del to deliver venom instead of producing eggs, or in some cases, in some of both, right? Some solitary wasps, right? the ovipositor does both. It's the stingy bit and also the egg laying bit. The venom would then be synthesized as an adult because the larvae don't need it. They're being like taken care of down below. And it's just not, it's just not something that the larva needs or being completely taken care of. And the venom is only something that the adult insects are going to need to be able to A, defend themselves and B, depending on the species, like if you're a paper wasp or you're a solitary tarantula hawk to deliver that venom once you're an adult. So uh, yeah, there you have it. It's a pretty, pretty quick rundown. I hope that generally answered your question and, uh, yeah, keep them coming. I love answering questions. <laughs> All right, bye bug friends. We'll see you on the next video.